Today we're going to look at rational equations and how they deal with our solving equations unit. So first thing, a rational equation is an equation in which one or more of the terms is a fractional one. When a rational equation is a proportion, remember a proportion is a fraction equal to another fraction, we can use cross products. Now product is another fancy word for multiplication, so we're also going to say cross multiply. So if you're doing a rational equation, you're going to cross multiply the terms. So in example one, we have 3 over x plus 5 equals 2 over x. In order to solve this, we're going to do cross multiply. So we're going to take our terms here, 3 times x, and then we're going to cross multiply these, 2x plus 5. Now always put the number by itself out in front because it's going to be distributive property. I don't really want you writing x plus 5 with a 2 after it. You could distribute that way, but it's usually seen with the number in front. Now, 3 times x is just 3x. On the right side, you'll have to do distributive property. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 5 is 10. At this point, it's what we did last week. You're going to subtract 2x from both sides, get the variables to the left. Okay, that cancels there. On the right side, we're only left with 10. On this side, 3x minus 2x is x, and you're actually left with x equals 10. So for example 1, x is 10. Now for example 2, you'll notice we have a fraction equal to a non-fraction, or in this case, a whole number. In order to make this a fraction, you're just going to put it over 1. So we basically have x over x plus 1 equals 4 over 1. That will allow us to cross multiply. So here we have x times 1, which is just x, or 1x. On the right side, you have 4 times x plus 1. So I'll put the number out in front, and then the parentheses next. Now we're going to try and solve this equation. So really, you've done everything below this line. You just have to do the cross multiplication when having two fractions. So here, we're going to bring down the x. We have x equals 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 1 is 4. We have to get the variables to the left side, so here we will subtract 4x from both sides. Remember, there's really a 1 in front of this x, so you basically end up with negative 3x equals 4. And your last step will be to divide both sides by negative 3. So we end up with a final answer of x equals 4 over negative 3. Now, for fractions, you should always double check in the calculator to make sure they're in simplest form. That is in simplest form, but in case we're checking, I would go to the calculator. Okay, I have alpha y equals enter. I have 4 over negative 3. I hit enter. It's okay to bring the negative out in front. So they're saying negative 4 thirds is our answer. So you can actually have a couple of different answers. They're all mean the same thing. You can have x equals negative 4 over 3 with the negative in front. You could also just put the negative up top. That's what I usually do. You're also not wrong if you do negative, if you do uh, 4 over negative 3, as long as only one negative. You don't want to do two negatives because be negative 4 over negative 3 would be a positive answer. Okay, next let's look at example 3. Example 3, you already have fractions. You have 7 over y minus 3 equals 3 over y plus 1. So first we'll cross multiply. So we have 7 times y plus 1. A side note, you could do the other one first. I tend to always go from the top left to the bottom right when I start. But it's not wrong. So we have 3 times y minus 3. Okay. Next, we're going to try and do our distributive property here. So we have 7 times y is 7y. Seven, 7 times 1 would be plus 7. 3 times y would be 3y. And 3 times a negative 3 is negative 9. Now I'll try and bring the variables to the left side. So we will move that 3y by subtracting it. Notice I'm lining up like terms. And if you want to draw in your lines to separate the two, exp uh, two expressions, that's fine. I'm going to start writing it without it. So we have 7y minus 3y is 4y plus 7 equals negative 9. Then we're going to move the constant. So subtract 7. Okay, change colors. We have 4y equals negative 16, if you put that in the calculator. 
Our last step here, it'll be divided by 4. And you get y equals negative 4. So this problem really shows up. We did quite a few in this. We did uh, rational equations here using distributive property, variables on both sides, and then a two-step. So this is really like four lessons that we've done so far, all in one problem. Really, the only thing being different with these problems is you're starting with cross-multiplication. So let's look at another example on the next page. Example four. Let's do two more examples, and we'll be done with this. So we have the first set would be 5, parentheses, 2x minus 3. And now my other product will be 2, parentheses, 7x plus 4. That's the start. Now what we'll do is we'll distribute. So 5 times 2x is 10x. 5 times a negative 3 is negative 15. 2 times 7x is 14x. 2 times 4 is 8. We have variables on both sides, so we are going to move the 14x to the left side. That's going to leave us with a negative variable. So we're going to have 10x minus 4x is negative 4x minus 15 equals 8. We're going to then move the constant by adding 15 to both sides. Okay. We get negative 4x equals 24. Okay, now our next step will be to divide by both sides by negative 4. And we get x equals, uh, let me change the color. So we get x equals uh, 6, uh, negative 6. So the answer here would be negative 6. If you wanted to check your answer, use a calculator. This would then, on the left side, give you 2 fifths if you substitute negative 6. Let's look at a word problem for once. The ratio of men to women, so I'm going to write here men to women, just to kind of set it up. We know that it's going to be a ratio of 4 to 3. So for every 4 men, there are 3 women. If there was 12,000 more men than women in attendance, then how many men and how many women are in attendance? If you look at this line right here, you realize that when they say there's 12,000 more men than women, they're comparing to women. So I'm going to use the, the letter W for women. You don't have to use W as your variable. You could use X or some other variable. For me, it helps to associate W with women in this problem. Okay. So out of every four men, there's three women. They're telling me that women, when you compare to women, there'll be 12,000 more men. So I take the amount of women, and I add the 12,000 additional men. We now have a rational equation. You have a fraction. You actually have a proportion. We're going to cross multiply and solve. So here would be 4w. Bring this over. OK, so we have 4w equals what we're going to do here. So this would be 3 parentheses w plus 12,000. Okay, our next step would be to distribute. So we have 4w equals 3 times w is 3w. 3 times 12,000 would be 36,000. And our last step, we have variables on both sides. We're going to move this 3w over, which actually will work out very nicely because 4w minus 3w is just w equals 36,000. Now, one thing you have to realize, we're not done. They're asking us to say how many women are in attendance, but also how many men. So W being women, we know that there are 36,000 women. Okay. In order to figure out the men, we know that there's 12,000 more men. So you would have to do 36,000 and add 12,000. And if you add those, you'll get 48,000. So there's going to be... 48,000 men. So this is their final answer. This would get you full credit. And if you look back at the problem, they're saying there were 12,000 more men than women. Well, this makes sense. 36,000 women, 48,000 men.